Hello there, guys, and welcome to this Twitch stream today. Uh, I'm kind of switching gears here and experimenting with the uh, different um, features that uh, Twitch has. Uh, and uh, as you all know, I'm still uh, kind of, uh, you know, kind of getting uh, used to uh, streaming. So today I chose to... Uh, uh, to stream here on Twitch. Uh, if you guys can hear me okay, uh, please let me know. If you can't, let me know as well. Uh, today I'm going to show you something uh, new, um, which is called self-loading cargo. It's, in my view, a brilliant little uh, plugin for Xplane and works for P3D as well. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short hop from Munich in Germany to uh, Frankfurt. Uh, it's a very short flight. We're going to be cruising at 24,000 feet, uh, where I hope I can show you all the different features uh, that this nifty little plugin brings to Xplain. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring up the... Uh, Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> All right, so that's what I wanted to do. There we go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with, uh, with this, uh, once you purchase the, uh, the plugin, uh, you have to, I'll provide you with a link uh, in the descri description later. And uh, what it does, it actually is a true simulation or it simulates the movement of your passengers, the loading of cargo, your cabin crew, um, all of that stuff is simulated. And it does this to a level of detail that I appreciate a lot. So it actually, every passenger has a different personality uh, where you can actually go and look at every single passenger um, and uh, uh, and, and, and see what their state is, what do they want, are they happy, are they not happy. Uh, so, uh, let's see here, S says full flight, oops, wrong stream. Why is it the wrong stream? Is it? Uh, I might have actually not changed uh, things here. Let me see here real quick, so you guys bear with me. Oh, you chatted in the wrong stream. Okay, you got you gave me a heart attack there. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come over here. So this is what you get when you install the plugin and, uh, and run it. And... Um, you will need XPUIPC uh, to run this. This is how it communicates with the uh, uh, with Xplane. So, and the nice thing about it, it's got all kinds of aircraft, and it's got an actual layout of those aircraft. So, if you select an Airbus A319, it will have the correct uh, layout of an A319 with all the right configuration in terms of passengers. So, enough said. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we're going to use the Lufthansa sound pack. Uh, it's a bit dated because I, I think I've heard the uh, flight attendant asking passengers not to smoke cigars. Uh, we're going to say Wi-Fi is available. We're going to click on advanced settings. Now, you can enter this information manually here, uh, or if you have um, dispatched the flight through SimBrief, you can simply click on SimBrief, and it will bring all the information to... Uh, to the plugin. So we're just going to wait a little little while here to uh, get everything here. All right, it says please wait a moment and we're just going to wait for it to... All right, so as you can see here, we have now Lufthansa. This is our flight, uh, flight number 4916. Cruise altitude is 24,000 feet. Uh, departure today is Echo Delta Delta Mike to Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot, and the departure time is uh, 17.30 hours Zulu time, 
1840 is the arrival. So everything is ready. We're ready to start the flight. So we're going to click on Start Flight. And now, as you can see, uh, you can start hearing the, uh, uh, let me just hop in here. All right, so what you're going to start hearing now, uh, you see 114 passengers are currently at the gate. Uh, 76 are satisfied. If you look here, it says the door is closed. So we have to click here uh, to open the doors. The seatbelt signs is currently turned on, uh, playing cabin music. And then there is, uh, we can address the cabin here. We are ready for boarding now. So I'm going to click here to address the cabin and say ready for boarding. Hi, cabin crew. We're ready to get going now. So as soon as you're ready, you can open the doors and start letting the passengers on board. Thank you. No problem. All right. And you can see now the message says here, door opening in three, two, one. And now the passengers are boarding. Okay. We can reduce the sound here. All right. So what I'd like to show you guys is if we click here on the aircraft layout, you will see that the cabin crew are moving along now, the cabin, and the passengers are boarding the plane you can see that uh, number of uh, boarding here seated and secured so it's going to take some time not only that there's something wrong with the with the sound yeah all right so i just lowered the uh, passenger ambience uh, because i think there is a problem with the uh, with the sounds there um, and then we can address the cabin here. Uh, all of these elements are currently not active, but this is the alcohol service, uh, drink service, food service, and this is Wi-Fi. Now, you will notice that the Wi-Fi connection is very poor right now, and the higher the elevation, the better uh, the, uh, the connection, the Wi-Fi connection. Next, we have here show current flight issues. Uh, if you have a, if you're running, if you're flying a virtual airline, this is the time to start your virtual airline uh, software. Uh, show ground technical report. It says cargo loading in progress. We've got about 25 items uh, of 82 currently on board the aircraft, and it's going to take about four minutes uh, before all the cargo is loaded. Now, the nice thing about this is you can always go here, right click. Are you sure you want to board all passengers instantly? We're going to just say no, and we're just going to wait for it while we start the APU and show you some of the different features. There, are, uh, there is a possibility that you will run into a medical emergency, and uh, if something like that happens, you will definitely need to... Um, you will definitely need to... Uh, divert or take action. Uh, there are a number of things that could go wrong with your passengers. So if I click here, for example, uh, this is Valerie Walker. She's saying she can't wait to get up there. Um, excellent flight so far. I would like some food. She's hungry. Uh, fairly windy today. So as you can see here, you can really dig into the current mood of each single passenger and then you can respond uh, accordingly. Uh, so you can play some music if you want, uh, or so, so if I click here, uh, now we can play some uh, cabin music. All right, let me turn up the volume. There you go. So now you can hear some music playing in the background and some uh, passengers like that, some don't. Uh, so I'm just gonna turn it off so that there isn't uh, too much interference with the sim and and what I'm saying. Um, so you can always filter by satisfaction, uh, anxiety. Uh, the current passenger is looking out the window uh, by the health of all your, uh, uh, all your passengers, uh, boredom, thirst, and you get the drift. So right now, what we're waiting for is we're waiting for the passengers to uh, come on board the aircraft, and then we will be able to uh, to take off. So what we're going to do is we are going to start the APU now. APU master. Right. 
Let me just move this here to the side. There we go. And we're going to turn on the nav lights. Arm the lights and fuel. Radios. Okay. So everything is uh, set up for our flight now. And uh, we're just going to wait for the APU to become available. And then if the passengers and cargo are not fully loaded by then, we'll just instantly load them into the aircraft. All right, let me just remove this for now. OK. Chili Willies, hello. Hello there, my friend. How are you doing? Welcome, everyone, to the stream. I decided to uh, do a Twitch stream today. Hello, Swappy. All right, APU is available, APU bleed is on, and the external power is now off. And we are pretty much ready to go. So we are going to bring our guy here again. And let's see, we still have quite a way to go, so we're going to Go ahead and say uh, board all passengers. Doors are closing. Takes about 20 seconds. And once we are airborne, I'll show you all the settings. It's got uh, a lot of settings so that you can configure this exactly the way you like. All right, so uh, we have now the, uh, uh, our cabin crew has advised us that all the passengers are on board. So what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna turn on the beacon light on and we are now ready to start our engines. The current um, altimeter is one Ladies zero one. This is your captain speaking, and on behalf of myself, the first officer, and the cabin crew, I'd just like to give you a warm welcome on board the aircraft. As you may have noticed, we've now closed the doors and expect to be departing in just a few moments. If you could get yourself seated and secured while we get ready for pushback, it'd be most appreciated. If you require any assistance from the cabin crew, please press the button above your head and be sure to listen to the safety briefing that we'll be playing in a few moments. You'll hear from me again once we reach our cruising altitude, but for now, once again, welcome aboard and thank you for flying with us. This is um, X-Plane 11.5 Vulcan Beta 10. And uh, there was an update for the, uh, this is the A319, and both the A319 and A321 by Tolis have both been updated uh, to work in 11.5, and they are Vulcan ready. So uh, we are starting the uh, engine number two, or the right uh, engine. And it looks like we have a good start. All right, engine is available. Let's go ahead and start engine number one. And in the meantime, we're going to set auto brake to max. We're going to arm the speed brake. And we're going to set flaps one. And we are going to set the trim to 0 0.07 up. Okay, and if we take a look now here at our friend, the self-loading cargo, and if we click here on advise the cabin, it says arm the doors, seat for takeoff, and holding position. So these are the three options that you have now. Come through, please, arm doors, thank you. Now, I have set up the uh, plugin so that it automatically does everything for me, so I don't have to worry about keep clicking here, um, which is really brilliant if you ask me. Okay, let's start the engine number one is started. 
Meine Damen und Herren, wir möchten Ihnen für diesen Flug einige Informationen geben, die für Sie von Interesse sind. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to inform you about a few things that will be of interest to you during the flight. Für die Unterbringung Ihrer persönlichen Gegenstände benutzen Sie bitte die Staufächer über Ihren Sitz. All right, folks, we're ready to go. Hi, Captain. The cabin is secured. All doors and contacts. We're ready to go. That's great, thank you. All right, all is ready to go. We're going to release the parking brake, and ooh. And we're going to head over to runway 26 right for departure. Please don't place any baggage in front of emergency exits. Zum Start bitten wir Sie, Ihre Sicherheitsgurte zu schließen und festzuziehen. For takeoff, we kindly ask you to fasten your seat belts and to pull them tight. Unser Flugzeug hat acht Notausgänge, die sich auf beiden Seiten der Kabine befinden. Sie sind mit dem Wort Exit gekennzeichnet. Our plane has eight emergency exits located on both sides of the cabin. They are marked with the word Exit. Leuchtstreifen am Boden führen zu diesen Notausgängen. Illuminated pass markings in the floor lead you to the emergency exits. Im Notfall verlassen Sie das Flugzeug über Notrutschen, die sich automatisch aufblasen. In case of an emergency, you will leave the plane by way of slide rafts, which automatically inflate. Meine Damen und Herren, während des Fluges wird der Luftdruck in der Kabine stets auf einer anderen As you can see, the Lufthansa safety announcement is being played now. All right, cabin crew. Löschen Sie dann bitte sofort Ihre Zigaretten. Ziehen Sie eine Maske ganz zu sich heran und drücken Sie die Öffnung fest auf Mund und Nase. Danach helfen Sie Kindern beim Anlegen der Maske. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, during our flights, the cabin air pressure will be maintained at a comfortable level. In case of sudden loss of pressure, oxygen mass will automatically drop from the cabin ceiling above you. Please extinguish your cigarettes immediately. Pull the mask towards you and press the opening firmly over your mouth and nose. Then assist children in fitting the mask properly. Bitte lesen Sie sorgfältig unsere Sicherheitsinstruktionen. Sie befinden sich in den Sitztaschen vor Ihnen und enthalten alle wichtigen Informationen. Please read our safety instructions carefully. They can be found in the seat pocket in front of you and contain all important information. Weitere Fragen beantworten Ihnen unsere Flugbegleiter gerne. Our cabin attendants will gladly answer any additional questions you may have. Bitte beachten Sie auch, dass das Rauchen... All right, so we are now making our turn here uh, towards the taxiway to runway 26 right. I just, I was uh, keeping quiet so that you guys can hear the uh, cabin announcement. I think this application so far, it really does bring uh, that extra level of immersion into the uh, into the experience here. And uh, so far, it says nothing to report. If we look here at our passengers. Yeah, so you're not allowed to smoke cigars and pipes on this flight. <laughs> it must be a really old uh, recorded uh, announcement there for Lufthansa. Please adjust the backrests of your seats into an upright position and fold up the tables. Wir wünschen Ihnen einen angenehmen Flug mit Lufthansa. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. We wish you a pleasant flight with Lufthansa and an enjoyable stay on board. Thank you for your attention. Okay. So the safety announcement is uh, now complete and it's going to be a while before we reach uh, the end of the taxiway. Um, but uh, you can see now if you click on the cabin show current uh, crew report, so is uh, crew are not seated. So they're still kind of uh, moving around the cabin and they will only uh, be seated once we instruct them to do so right before uh, takeoff.
The flight should be a short flight to uh, Frankfurt, and I've done this on purpose uh, so that we can, I can just show you all the features of uh, self-loading cargo. Uh, this, by the way, this application is still in, uh, in early access, but it's being updated um, uh, quite frequently. So uh, by all means, if you, uh, you know, if you like what you see, go ahead and get it. I think it's 12 pounds or something. Uh, that way, you know, you uh, definitely support the developer, uh, but it really does add a lot, a lot of immersion to, uh, to the, I, I really personally like it, and I seldom like those applications. Uh, I'm not somebody who likes those, like those kind of applications simply because they're not well made uh, and you know you kind of have to figure too many things out and set too many things. This one is pretty much autopilot. So you just uh, I'll show you once we're airborne and uh, we reach uh, you know uh, once we're in uh, autopilot, I will show you guys uh, the different settings uh, that come with this uh, plugin. There is an aircraft coming to land here, and we will depart immediately after uh, after this aircraft is uh, has landed. Okay, all is looking good here. Let's set things up for departure. So we are going to put this on takeoff. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the landing lights, strobes. Come crew seat for takeoff, please. Thank you. So obviously the landing uh, light triggers the uh, message to the cabin crew to take their seats. And that's our turn here for the runway, runway 26 right, clear right, and we're just going to make sure that the aircraft that just landed has vacated the runway. Approaching 26 right. There we go. And we're just going to wait for the aircraft to vacate the runway, and we'll be on our way. Okay, all is good to go. Let's start the clock. Yeah, right there. The aircraft is uh, vacating the runway. I am not using Active Sky today. Uh, believe it or not, I'm using uh, default explain weather with default explain clouds. All right, here we go. 50. Manflex, Toga, SRS, and Runway. Checked. And rotate. Gear up, please. Gear is going up. Altimeter setting, altimeter setting, altimeter setting, altimeter setting, altimeter setting, altimeter setting, altimeter setting. What's with that? Altimeter setting, 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 altimeter setting
Finally. Right, we're doing okay. Okay, let's pitch down a bit here and gain some speed. Perfect. And flaps are going up. Autopilot is engaged. All right, so pretty much from now on till we uh, reach top of descent, uh, we can take a little more uh, a detailed look at uh, you know at this uh, plugin. All right, so we are good to go now. We are climbing to uh, our cruise altitude today of twenty four thousand feet, and everything else is looking good. You know what? Let's be brave and take a look at the exterior. You know, those X-Plane default clouds aren't, aren't that bad, actually. They look all right. Okay, so let's take a look at our passengers here and see, uh, so the crew are okay. So if we click on open flight logs, um, okay. So here you can see that I've done um, a flight before. Um, yesterday actually the same route i was testing this and this is actually something that's uh, available to you both in the app here uh, you can access it in app or you can access it via the website um okay. all right ten thousand feet let's uh, kill the lights Okay, so we're above 10,000 feet. We can turn off uh, the seatbelt signs. Uh, ground spoilers are armed. We can disarm them. And everything else is good. All right, so let's go back and uh, take a look at uh, our guy here. And as you can see here, it gives you all kinds of information about your flight. Uh, so we departed Munich uh, to... Uh, uh, to Frankfurt uh, right here that's the arrival uh, and we carried about 144 passengers great uh, pilot grade is a uh, the rating from the passengers is 49 uh, percent uh, minus 9.9 .9. now minus 9.9 .9, that's the rating from that's because when they boarded the plane they were happier for some reason um, and as you can see now the Wi-Fi signal is much stronger than when we took off and uh, there are about 78 uh, uh, passengers connected through uh, Wi-Fi and the speed is uh, still pretty good uh, so 80 connections yeah more people are connecting to the Wi-Fi uh, so again uh, lots and lots of details uh, really very immersive uh, uh, little application here and now we can actually go to this guy here who's very happy uh, you know Wi-Fi is good so the Wi-Fi service is good love the engine noise excellent flight so far Wi-Fi was slow obviously two minutes ago but as we gain altitude uh, you know things will get better so uh, and by the way if you click on this report it will open up a web page uh, right here so I do want to show you guys this and now you have a detailed report on everything on that flight so the landing rate uh, maximum pitch up and down you can see all the greens now for some reason it, it, it told me that you know I did not I forgot to turn on the landing lights uh, before 10,000 feet uh, during landing approach which, which isn't correct but uh, for some reason yeah some reason it, it uh, so you have a full flight report here uh, with everything to do with your with your flight so I really like uh, what this application does 
And uh, as you can see, we are still unable to offer the, uh, the service. Uh, here, no crew issues, everything's good. 73% uh, of our passengers are uh, still satisfied. The plugin, uh, it's definitely worth getting, in my view at least. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, to be honest. It, it really adds that level uh, of immersion while you're flying. Uh, because you know you're flying with uh, uh, you know with passengers and and uh, you can get like a, a, an emergency while on board and then you have to divert uh, and the rating is going to be based on that so for I, I believe it's 12 pounds uh, or so I'm not sure exactly how much it, I think it was 12 pounds um, so I think uh, to me it's uh, it's definitely worth it it's it's a lot of fun it adds uh, to to the immersion for sure uh, are there different announcement voices available yes so on the website there are a number of uh, safety announcement gate uh, music uh, the ambience uh, you can put your own if you like uh, the way it's structured is uh, actually pretty simple uh, so you, if you have even your uh, you know your own safety announcement you can just simply uh, put it there uh, but yeah, definitely brilliant, uh, brilliant application. I, I really like it. All right, so now we can offer some service. Uh, we're going to offer food service. Uh, currently serving food. Okay, so we are serving uh, food now uh, to our customers. Uh, now. Just as a note, this is an extremely short flight. So the minute we reach our top of climb, we probably need to uh, set up top of descent. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to, let's see here now, it's probably the next page. Yeah. So this is all the information we need to uh, at Munich. And as you can see here, the winds 287 knots, that's all right. Uh, and then cloud and visibility, okay. 18 Celsius is the temperature. Q&H is 1010. No significant change in the next couple of hours from the time this METAR was uh, issued. So all is looking good. And uh, I didn't my phone thinks that I'm issuing it some commands. So. Okay, so we are now at uh, 24,000 feet, which is the cruise altitude. Ladies and gentlemen, from the cockpit, just to let you know, we've reached our cruise level and we're not anticipating any major delays, so hope to have you at your destination on time as planned. As the cabin crew make their way around the aircraft, please make sure the aisles are clear of any items, and I invite you to please sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Thank you. All right, so that was uh, the captain uh, speaking to the... Uh, uh, to the cabin, uh, informing them that we've reached uh, cruise altitude. Uh, now, the one time, the one thing that you need to do is before, if you look here, uh, we are uh, approximately 68 nautical miles from top of descent. Okay, so we need to start entering our destination data. But one thing that we need to do is we need to approximately 10 nautical miles before top of descent. We need to come here and announce top of descent. Now all of the stuff here you will have to do yourself. So if there is an emergency on board, for example, if, if there is turbulence ahead, bad weather, uh, if we're expecting any arrival delays or we want to divert the flight or return to the uh, to the airport for, for example, engine fire or anything, any, any sort of emergency, those are things that are not um, automated and those that you have to announce yourself to your uh, passengers and your cabin crew. Uh, we see now that the passengers are happy. Uh, I think they were hungry. So uh, we are serving them food. Now just for you guys to get an appreciation of how much work has gone into this, um, let, me, let me show you the settings. So if you go to the settings, you have the general tab, voices, features, sound effects, penalties, uh, third-party services, compatibility, and about end credits, okay? 
The general tab allows you to uh, show the different phases of flight, uh, if you want to show the next action, uh, show the simulation status, remind me to submit VA, that's of course if you're flying a VA, allow window transparency, restart is required, attempt to keep uh, self-loading cargo on top of full screen applications, uh, which is not, not a bad, bad idea, uh, dock the window, you know, all these different uh, uh, options you've got uh, for the general tab. Moving to voices, uh, this is what you can do with voices. So you can either select the captain, cabin crew, and ground voices, or you can actually use text-to-speech. And for text-to-speech, there are files available to you that you can type in those files whatever you want. And then you can uh, have the uh, built-in speech engine of Windows actually read those out uh, if that's what you choose to do. Uh, so again, very granular uh, details, very granular options for you to really configure this uh, plugin the way you like. Uh, features, uh, boarding and deboarding, again, you can set this to automatically happen or you can set it so that you can manually do it, uh, which is again, very, very cool. Uh, as you can see, even the in-flight services can be fully configured. So automate seatbelt signs or make manual, automate the in-flight service, include bar and alcohol service, repeat throughout the flight. So if you're, uh, uh, if you're flying a, a very long route, uh, you might want to do that. Sound effects, uh, I've turned this one off. Uh, uh, gate, audio, and aircraft doors are open. It's just really annoying, uh, the gate ambience, because you already have the aircraft ambience. Uh, passenger ambience uh, volume uh, is set here and boarding music you can turn on and off. And then you've got the dong sounds, the ding dong sounds, you know, all of that. Cleaning service after you uh, park the aircraft. Really look at just all these features, all those penalties. So everything's being monitored as you, um, you know, as you fly. Uh, sim brief integration is there so that uh, as you've noticed in the beginning, we got the uh, you know, the flight from SimBrief. So all you need to do is just put in your username. Uh, compatibility, so this actually works with P3D as well. Uh, but we are gonna put um, turbulence detection. Uh, I think this is, as it says here, highly experimental. Uh, for example, it's not correctly report turbulence to XUPI PC. So you might wanna do it yourself. So, Folks, what we're going to do now is we're going to set the information for our arrival. Uh, we are approximately 41 nautical miles from the top of descent point. So we're going to go to next and next, and we're going to enter the QNH, which is 1010. The temperature at our destination is 18 Celsius. So we'll enter that here. And the wind is 280 at seven knots, 280, seven knots. And the decision height, we're just gonna say 250. And V app is 145. And voila, we are all done. Uh, we're gonna put this back here, 36 nautical miles to top of descent. And we can bring this up here now and take a look at the final cruise altitude or the uh, approach altitude, I believe is 4,000, but we have it here at 1660. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna uh, descend initially to 4,000. There we go, that is set. And now all we need to do is uh, just simply um, announce the top of descent about 10 nautical miles before we reach uh, that point. And uh, and then we'll begin our descent uh, at the top of descent mark.
I think the clouds look okay, those default clouds from X-Plane. Pilot 737, hi QA Pilot. Hello there, my friend. Welcome to the stream. I hope you guys are enjoying the stream and uh, there is so much more that you can do on Twitch for you guys uh, than you can on YouTube. Uh, for example, if you type in exclamation route, you'll get you know the route that I'm currently flying. Uh, if you type in exclamation METAR and then followed by the ICO code of the airport, uh, whether it's uh, you know Munich or uh, Frankfurt, you'll get the METAR um, uh, on on the chat. Um, so I really, I, I really don't know why people prefer YouTube uh, for streaming. I love YouTube for uh, for playback, for video playback. Uh, but for streaming, I find um, you know I find uh, Twitch to be a lot more polished. Uh, and uh, I, I really enjoy using it uh, a lot. Okay, so here are uh, we are now about 18 nautical. So at 10 nautical miles uh, from our top of descent mark, we're going to announce to our clients, uh, to our customers, that is, uh, that we are. <clears throat> hey, Rand, how are you doing, my friend? Oh, very good to see you. Yeah, it is kind of late for me. Uh, Hello to all my friends and followers from Turkey. All right, so we are now 13 nautical miles. All right, let's go ahead and inform our passengers that uh, you know they need to take care of whatever they need to take care of uh, before we... Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, from the cockpit once again, you'll be delighted to know that we will shortly be starting our descent, at which point the cabin crew will start preparing for our arrival. If you can make sure all rounds are clear for the cabin crew as they start making their way around the aircraft, we most appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so as you can see now, we have informed the cabin uh, of uh, the, uh, you know, that we're reaching top of descent and that we will be descending shortly. Uh, in fact, if we look here, we are nine nautical miles from top of descent. Uh, I really like this app. It's, it's really a lot of fun. And uh, uh, definitely when, when, I, when I tried it for the first time, it kind of, you know, it just made me chuckle. Uh, you know, every time there was an announcement or was something, because it is actually very realistic, uh, and, and the timings—they've got the timings right. Uh, you know, things happen at the right time at the right altitude. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely worth it. Um, what do you think about new Microsoft Flight Simulator, Captain? Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I will tell you guys that it is absolutely amazing. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, every little detail that you can think of in terms of, uh, for example, vegetation, grass, uh, buildings, water waves, is just absolutely amazing. Stunning visuals. Um, and uh, even on my, you know, aging uh, monster, it still performs very, very well um, in terms of FPS. So I, you know, I've got like everything cranked up. And uh, all right, so let's start the descent. Um, it's got all the stuff that you, as a flight simmer, would want in one package. And that is something I appreciate a lot uh, about the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, as you guys have seen from all the videos, all the public videos, of course, I cannot say anything uh, that is uh, indigenous to the, uh, the alpha testing, but I can freely speak about everything that you've seen in public. If you look at the live weather, uh, live traffic, the multiplayer mode, all of those things are part of the sim. You don't need to buy any add-ons. You don't need to buy anything else. It's just there. 
in the sim. And, and that, I think, is uh, absolutely brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen from the cockpit, you may have noticed we've begun descending to our destination. We're not expecting any delay, so we should have you on the ground in the next 20 minutes or so. If you could assist the cabin crew by tidying the train, handing them any letters that come around, it would be most appreciated, and make sure to fasten your seatbelts. For safety reasons, please turn off all electronic devices or switch them to airplane mode until after we've landed. Please also note that the aircraft toilets will shortly be out of use. Thank you. All right, so that was the uh, captain address to the cabin as we begin our descent into our final destination. So back on Microsoft Flight 2020, um, in summary, it is a full flight simulation platform that gives flight simmers everything they want in one package. Um, and there were many challenges that the development team had to go through uh, to develop uh, to develop Microsoft Flight Simulator from technical things to non-technical things. Um, and once you actually guys put your hands on it, you will understand what I'm talking about. But also the introduction of uh, the aircraft that you guys have already seen. Uh, for example, you've seen that there are uh, uh, you know, GA aircraft, uh, there is an Airbus, there is a Boeing 747, uh, and those are done quite well. Visually, they are stunning, of course. Um, the flight model is something I cannot talk about right now, but suffice it to say um, that it is an improvement over what Microsoft did in the past, where there was a single point uh, on, the, on the wings, for example, uh, and that point uh, is the point of reference for a lookup in a table that predicts the kind of behavior the aircraft is supposed to uh, mimic in real life uh, so that you know you get a, an accurate flight model so what they've done is they they, they created hundreds of points now um, and and that of course will make the approximation uh, of what would really happen in real life uh, far more accurate and far more realistic so let's keep an eye here on our altitude P3D version 5 is a lot better about autogen scenery loading, but it's still hard to fly. Um, well, <clears throat> um, you know, a, a P3D version 5 is uh, definitely an improvement uh, over, you know, over version 4. But if you want my complete honest opinion, the changes from version 4 to version, version 5 aren't that significant. And the fact that you have to pay a full license, which by the way, I, I did, uh, is something I have trouble with uh, a little bit. If, if I consider the flight sim community and if I consider the age range, Okay, so if I, when I look at the analytics in my channel, there are a lot of people who are, you know, very young, uh, you know, between the age, b below the age of 15, 14, that are very interested in flight simulation. Those are probably future pilots, uh, maybe aviation enthusiasts, maybe, uh, you know, they'll some way or another have a career in aviation. And that is, I think, a put off for these guys. Um, it's it's very expensive to get the professional license and for very little in terms of what you gain in terms of, by the way a lot of people are still using uh, p3d version version 4 uh, and uh, I think that um, uh, I think that p3 uh, uh, Lockheed are still updating uh, version 4 so they haven't really abandoned version 4 uh, while they uh, figure out what's wrong with the, you know, with version five, there was already a hotfix, I think. 
As far as I'm concerned, uh, I've uninstalled P3D version 5 from my, uh, from my machine. I am exclusively uh, flying X-Plane and uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, 2020 now. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Those are my thoughts. I can see you guys are trying those commands. Some of them are working. Some of them did not work for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe I need to restart Sim Toolkit Pro. Uh, but you see the, the strip, the information uh, strip that you see uh, on top is that of uh, is that of uh, Sim, Tool Sim Toolkit Pro. All right, we are approaching 10,000 feet. What right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to max speed. I'm going to reduce our speed to 240 knots and I'm going to extend the speed brakes some funny looking uh, star into into Frankfurt Yeah, we'll uh, we'll go back to manage speed uh, later on. We're gonna arm the speed brake now. Right, 204. All right, let's take a look here at our speeds. We actually should be at 250 um, right now, up to yeah, all the way down here. So here's what we'll do. We will go to manage speed. That's fine. We can go to 250 knots but hopefully it won't take us more than 250 knots. You know what? 250 is fine. Let's keep it there. All right, so we are approaching uh, 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and turn on the landing lights. And we're gonna turn off, uh, turn, uh, runway turn off lights and the nose lights as well. Wig lights so that we don't forget them and we're going to turn on the seat belt signs on That is actually uh, Frankfurt. All right, so we are below 10,000 feet. The seatbelt signs are now turned on. And uh, we are on our way for runway 07 uh, right uh, today for the arrival. Uh, we will make a note of the transition altitude, which is 5,000 feet. And the Q&H is 1010. We're looking good for the uh, approach, I think. Our altitude is good. Everything's looking good. We're going to turn on the landing system here. Come crew, please prepare the come for landing. Thank you. And there was the captain again instructing the cabin crew to prepare the cabin for landing. Uh, again, everything really is very systematic with uh, self uh, uh, self loading cargo. Very systematic. Everything happens at the time that he expected to happen, and it's done quite well. I think, the, the, considering the fact that this is st still in early access, is actually commendable. Uh, it works very well. Works both for P3D 
and it works for X-Plane as well. Uh, for P3D, you're ne you will need FSUPIC, and I hope I said that correctly. And for X-Plane, you need uh, the X XPUIC, um, which provides for the communication mechanism between the plugin and the SIM. All is looking good and we continue our descent uh, I'm going to set the to 1600 actually 1700 is fine and we're going to reduce the range here And all is looking good, ladies and gentlemen. And that's our turn. All is looking good. I think those clouds look okay. They're not too bad. And those are the default clouds that ship with uh, with X-Plane 11. And I actually, uh, what I came to notice is that they are very easy on the frames as well. Uh, that's definitely one thing I've noticed uh, after, oh, transition altitude, 1010 is set. And now we're going to go to manage speed. And as soon as we hit this uh, pink dot here, we should have the uh, approach phase activated. Looking good. All right, let's go ahead and slow down. All right, let's uh, let's tell our guys to uh, cabin crew, please take your seats for landing. Thank you. All right, so we've advised the cabin crew to uh, to take their seats for landing. All right, and flaps one. Looking okay. We should actually lower the landing gear. Right, landing gear is down. Speed check, flaps two. Two thousand five hundred. Speed check, flaps three.
Speed check, flaps full. Okay, not yet. Approach is activated. Autopilot 2 is engaged. Cabin crew advised. And all is looking good. I think we might have uh, lowered the landing gear a bit too early, but that's all right. Cabin is ready. No blues, we are clear to land runway 07 right at Frankfurt. And that's the runway right there ahead of us. One thousand four hundred. All is looking good. All right, let's uh, prepare to take over. And we're gonna take over at 1,000 feet. Spoilers are armed. All right, 1,000 feet and my airplane. Approaching zero seven right. Just very uh, slight wind here as we come into land. Nothing too serious. Five hundred. Four hundred. Hundred above. Three hundred. Light slow. Two hundred. Light slow. One hundred. Light slow. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Ten. Long landing. Five. Long landing. Three thousand. Three hundred meters remaining. Reversers are out. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Frankfurt. Eighty knots, manual braking. Okay, and okay to clean up. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated until the aircraft has arrived at the gate. You are reminded that all electronic devices should remain turned off until you are in the terminal building. Thank you. 
All right, we can turn off the lights. We'll keep the taxi lights on and runway turn off lights. We can turn off the strobes and the wing lights can go off as well. Uh, and let's go ahead and start the APU. There we go. All right, let's take a quick look at our uh, passengers now. 92% satisfied, uh, a bit too smooth, minus 85 feet per minute. So we did okay, it was a bit of a floater. Um, and the toilets are five, now locked. Center. As you can see here, there's just too many things monitored. I love it. I just love how everything is monitored. So that's the flight report that we have here. Service automation is turned on. All right, we'll, we're gonna find a spot to land. Uh, beg your pardon, to park the aircraft. Let's see here. Right, APU bleed is on. And I think that's a nice spot for us to uh, park the aircraft uh, at the gate. And we've been correctly identified as an A319. Come through doors to manual, please. Right, doors to manual. Set parking brake. And ladies and gentlemen, everything is done here. Let's turn off the lights. And beacon lights are off. And now, as you can see, the door is opening. So click to open the doors, or you can just wait and the doors will come back up please open doors, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen from the cockpit, once again, I hope you enjoyed your flight with us today. On behalf of myself, the first officer, and the cabin crew, we wish you a safe and pleasant journey from the airport and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for flying with us. All right, good stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, I don't know if you guys want to see the uh, replay of the landing. Uh, if you do, let me know. All right, yes, replay. All right, so as you can see here, we have uh, we finished this. Uh, looks like I've missed some of your uh, some of your chat here. Okay, so right now, uh, as it, we can just come here, and we're gonna. Say, are you sure you want to deboard? Yes. So what's going to happen now is 
all the cargo has been unloaded, so nothing needs to uh, to unload now. But if we go to the Do you hear that? So the aircraft is currently being cleaned, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, so cleaning aircraft says, please wait the uh, cleaning aircraft. And now we can view the flight report, by the way. So if I click here, uh, this is the full flight report. Um, the pilot grade is A+, plus. I'm very proud of that. Uh, 85 uh, feet per minute, a bit too smooth. Uh, the passenger rating is 90.3%. That's an improvement of 1.6% uh, over the rate, the satisfaction rate of your passengers when they boarded the aircraft. So this was a perfect flight. So this is the flight summary. You communicated effectively with cabin crew during all the critical flight phases, ensuring their safety. Your control of the aircraft was flawless which makes for very comfortable passengers. Your landing was very good, but while you ensured the comfort of your passengers, you were in danger of causing the aircraft to float down the runway. Ooh, wow, look, it actually detected that, affecting stopping distance and potential control of the aircraft. Try to manage your, the flare a little better. Uh, overall, your passengers were slightly happier after flying with you. Good work. Um, so this is actually, uh, it was, uh, this was the scheduled departure, uh, off blocks was this, uh, the result was an on-time departure, a scheduled arrival is uh, 2003, uh, so that was an early uh, arrival into our destination, and then you've got, um, uh, you've got everything here. Uh, it says uh, here that, you know, we've managed all this information correctly here. So let's take a look here. So everything is in the green. You stayed on the taxiway at all times. You know, all good stuff. As you can see, really fun uh, plug-in. And now you guys want to see a replay of the landing. So let's do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there we go. All right. That's a replay of the landing. And we can take a view at the wing here. Ladies and gentlemen, as you might have noticed, we did in fact abort our landing attempt just there. Um, we decided it would be safer to try to circle around to try again. Hopefully the wind will be on our favour a little bit uh, more this time. And uh, we'll get you safely on the ground as soon as possible. So uh, in the meantime, if you could just keep your belt fashion and uh, we'll make another attempt in a few moments. Thank you. So yeah, I think overall the uh, overall the landing was all right. It was a bit of a floater. Um, let's see here. Where is the runway? There. We can always do this. That's us right there. Oh, come on. Man, I tell you, I love X-Plane. Here, we'll keep uh, the uh, wing, wing view for you guys. Pretty smooth sim. Uh, I think after Vulcan, um, X-Plane is uh, 
is really becoming a very promising flight simulation platform. Still, uh, they've got a few things to iron out, but overall, uh, I absolutely love it. That's the touchdown. Reversers. They were a bit late. Well, folks, this is pretty much what I uh, wanted to share with you today. I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this stream and that you've enjoyed uh, self-loading uh, cargo. Uh, in my view, this uh, plugin is worth its price. Uh, it definitely receives uh, my uh, Q8 Pilot seal of uh, approval. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in today and being part of this uh, Twitch stream. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please, by all means, uh, reach out uh, uh, to my Discord, Twitter, um, uh, email, uh, whichever way you like and feel more comfortable with. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.